Welcome to Vision Church. So glad you joined us this Sunday morning. If I haven't met you before, I'm Matt Vanderbilt, lead pastor on a journey. And uh, we're on this journey together. And in fact, I want to tell you about uh, some of the people I talked to this week. You know, one I talked to, she went to the doctor and she's hearing words like cancerous cells. And you know, when she hears that song, and she literally saying, God, are you out there? I talked to somebody else. They said, you know what? Our finances are so tight, I think about it all the time. When I'm at work, when I'm at home, when I look at the bills, when I don't want to look at the bills, I said, I think about it all the time. And then there was someone else. Actually, it was, it was John's family. I'm talking to them and, and, and Marie's uh, dad, getting reports from the doctor about things in his head that maybe they can cure and maybe they can't. And they're saying, God, where, where are you? I talked to somebody else. She, uh, she runs a nonprofit. She says, you know what? I, I have pressure on me as a boss that maybe I, I didn't ask for that. Maybe I, didn't, maybe I didn't want all that. I just wanted to do something I love doing. She feels pressure. Talked to a, a young man, not even 20 yet. I said, how can I pray for you? He said, pray for my anxiety. And of course, me, I'm sitting back saying, 20? How long have you been dealing with that? He says, years. I said, really? And that, I'll say, that hurts my heart because I know he's calling out to God saying, God, where are you? Will you walk with me through that fire? And you say, well, Matt, how, how about you? You walk through any fires? I mean, everything's great in your world. And I say, if, if you're like me, maybe sometimes you wake up in the morning and you say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to tackle today. I'm going to get after it. And you start walking down the hall and then almost like someone's putting blankets on you saying, what about the pressure of finances? And you, you feel something on you. What about the pressure of my time? And you feel something else on you. Am I making the right choices? And you feel like someone's like piling blankets on you so that by the time you get to the end of the hallway, out to the kitchen, you're like, can, can I face today? Do I want to? Have I got what it takes? Is God with me? And almost daily, weekly, yearly, we're faced with that. It's saying, God, you know, I feel like I'm walking through a fire. And some days it's a bigger fire. And some days it's a lesser fire. But you know what? I think we can all relate even to that song saying, you know what? God, there are days I want to call out and get a sign. Are you still there? Are you going to help me through this? Is there any hope? And we say there is. And in fact, we come together here at Vision every Sunday to talk about this hope. To say from the youngest age, through our kids and our students, up to our oldest, there is a hope that we can find and we can share with each other. And that we truly can bond together and say, you know what, let's, let's walk through this together. Let's figure this out together. So in your toughest time, I'll be with you. And in my toughest time, you'll be with me. And we say, you know what? Let's come together and gather around and not hide God's hope, but let's share it with our community. And like John said, every week we're having four, five, last week seven first-time families come in and try out our church. And we want to say, you know what? This is our hope to share. We want to share what we found. And this series we're going through called Write Your Story for eight weeks, we're looking in the Bible and saying, God, I may not understand everything I read, but I'm trying to trust it. I'm trying to learn from it. I'm trying to apply it. And what God does to help us even to understand it and apply it better, he puts people in our lives today where we can hear their story and learn from them. Now, this, this series we're in called Write Your Story, we've got a, a takeaway card, we call it. And if you didn't get one when you came in, there's one in your row or our, our host teams can get you one. But I want to make sure you take home with you your takeaway card. Because honestly, so much more than this time we spend together, you listening to me teach, is honestly the time you spend with God this week, following up on it and reading in his word. If you need a Bible, you say, you know what, I don't want to do it on an iPad or a phone. I want a Bible and I don't have one. When I introduce our care team at the end of today, you can stop by any Sunday in our care room. They'll give you a Bible for free. They don't want anything from you. They just want to serve you, give you a Bible, or talk with you, or pray with you. But this week, when you look at your takeaway card, it's a little bit different. There aren't fill in the blanks. There's actually just going to be a spot where you're going to put uh, some symbols on there. I'll talk about that in a minute. But there's verses on there you can look at during the week and spend time with God just saying, God, are you out there? Will you teach me something? Will you help me understand this? And he will. He'll meet you there. So our bottom line for the series, you see on your takeaway card or on the screen, our bottom line, that God, he's got a timeless story he's telling. There, there's really no beginning or no end to it. A timeless story. And we each have a unique and a personal part to play in it, to be a part of his story. And that excites me because I say, you know what, God? I want to understand you more and your story 
I want you to really write it through me, write it so I can understand it. But God, and God also says to me, Matt, I love you so much, I have designed you to have a unique and a personal part to play in that story. And what's so cool about that, when you look in the Bible, and I will hear in a minute on my iPad, but we're also going to hear about it from people in our church. And if you ever say, man, I could never talk on stage. That makes me so nervous. Well, you know what? I'm bringing up some people today. They said the same thing. It makes me so nervous. But you know what? God speaks through them. And so, in fact, I want to welcome up Dale and Terry Morton. He's coming up here, and Dale's going to share his story. All right, guys, come on up. I appreciate you coming in here to share your story. And, you know, last week we had Matt and Kelly Reese come up, share theirs. And now we posted theirs up here, and now Dale comes up. And guys, uh, if you guys don't know the Mortons, uh, their daughter Jacqueline, we mentioned her last week. She's down in Florida on a trip where she's going out to share her faith. And little did Jacqueline know that her daddy was going to be up on stage here today sharing his. So, Dale, if you would, tell us your story. Yeah, good morning. Hey, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. I'll tell you what, calling all angels, that's a great something special to me. <laughs> uh, you know, I've been involved in church almost all my life, but I never, you know, really took it serious. I strayed away from the church, and, I, you know, I just did my own thing. I walked straight into the fire. After I graduated, I walked straight into the fire with alcohol and party. And after I got out of the service, it just got worse. And I just thought that I knew God was with me and saved and knew He was with me. But I thought partying and doing what I wanted to do was more important. You know, that was a big deal for me. And then I felt like if I went to church on Sunday morning and volunteered a little bit, just did a little couple things, that be enough. But God didn't think so. You know, God don't make you sick. He don't break you down. You know, He don't hurt you. He's a great physician. He'll, he'll heal you. He'll take care of you. you put your trust in Him and faith. He'll take care of you. A little less than two years ago, I had a uh, fire I walked through, and it was pretty bad. It was, I went to six different doctors. I had two surgeries in less than three months. And doctors was telling me, buddy, you, you're on the road to die, man. We're not kidding. We, we laid it out for you. You're going to die. And all my friends were looking at me, and they said, they knew it. They said, dang, Dale, you look bad. They didn't know when you was going to make it, but when you going to kick, you know, because I can come get your stuff. <laughs> 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 but uh, I just kept getting sicker and sicker. And then, you know, I finally turned back to the Lord and started praying. My wife, Terry, my Jacqueline, my daughter, Jacqueline. Hey, girl. She's, uh, she says she'll be watching this online. It comes up on Tuesday or Wednesday. She's very strong in the Lord, man. What a, what a blessing my daughter is to me. <laughs> but I kept praying to God. And he, he, he worked through me. He let me get all the way down and to know where, where he was at in my life. And I knew where he was at in my life. And by the grace of God and his mercy, and the doctors and me doing what they said, I'm healed, you know, my, as long as I don't go crazy again. <laughs> I'm healed, man. I'm, I'm as good as young it is inside. I mean, the damage is done, but it ain't going no further as long as I don't help it along. And I don't plan on doing that. You know, I've been to a lot of fires in my life. I've been around the world. I mean, I've been in places that you would not never think about, but... And I've been with people that you never would think about. And uh, never mentioned one time I was a Christian or God was with me. You know, God says in the Bible, he'll never leave you or forsake you. He was already there. He had already been there before I got there. He had already walked that walk. And I never said a word to him about, you know, being a Christian. But maybe in some of them places I should have. And if y'all go in some places like that, Tell them you're a Christian, man. Watch what happens. You might bring some out, and they might kick you out. You never know. But it's worth it to me to do that because I've tried now to stay in small groups. My brother's here, my small group, man. It's very important that you get connected with a group of Christians that you can relate to and talk to because you got problems in this life, man. Every day. Every day, man. It hits you like a brick. You just got to be able to put some mortar on it and lay it down. And 
my, my brothers and my sisters, they all with me. My brothers, I love my small group. I can talk to them. And Matt, man, y'all been a blessing. This church is a blessing to me. <laughs> I tell you what, man, it, I never should have went in them places, but he's always with me. And I never did introduce him, but I should have introduced God to them people because in Deuteronomy 31 8, God said he'll never leave you or forsake you. And that's a good thing to remember. There's a lot of stuff in the Bible, man. That's some good stuff in that Bible if you'll get it out and read it. I mean, right. dude, man, they, they stories of what you're going through, what we're going through, it's in there. You just got to get it out and read it. And, man, you'll find it. And uh, that's about all I got for you, man, right now. <laughs> I've had a whole box of matches. I didn't use no pack. I had a whole box. <laughs> my wife, Terry, she got something to say. I would like to just interject that um, during our lifetime, we're all going to go through fires, and our loved ones are going to walk through fires. And to get them through, you got to hit your knees and pray. And don't quit praying. And if you got prayer warnings, you can call them, you. them to pray too. God's going to bring them through the fire. They're going to be a better person. And don't give up on them. God's never given up on me, and He's not giving up on anybody else. All right. That's great stuff. Well, let's thank these guys for sharing. Thanks, Dale. Thanks, Terry. Love you guys. Yeah, I'll put it right here. Okay, well, let's take a look in God's Word because these, uh, these stories we hear are real, and we look in the Bible and see stories from years back that are real, too. And I want to talk today about a guy named Shadrach. And may, maybe you've heard that name, maybe know a little bit about him. As I talk about him today, I do it a little different. I'm not going to actually read through verse by verse. I'm going to tell you some of the story. And then show you some of the story. And if you got your takeaway card, actually what I want you to do when I go through some of the points, and you can uh, write down there either whether they're kind of like an, an up arrow, meaning, hey, something good is happening, or a down arrow, which we'll see a bunch of those, meaning something bad is happening, or a question mark, meaning there was a pivotal moment where you had to make a decision. And I want to encourage you, this week, if you would get out your Bible and read through this story again, and get out a pencil or a pen, and actually in your Bible, when you get to that point, Put an up arrow, or a down arrow, or a question mark. Because I'm telling you, if, if you're not feeling the fire today, you will in a week, or in a year, and hopefully you can remember this day and this moment when you say, man, those guys at Vision, they said, go to, go to Daniel chapter 3, I think, and you'll open it up, and you'll see some of your marks in there. And I believe that can help you as you go through some up arrows and down arrows in your life. Now, this guy Shadrach, his story begins, you see number one, this, uh, this city, uh, Jerusalem, you've heard of that back in, in his day, many years ago. This is kind of like the, the chief city, the capital city. It seemed to be, you know, unstoppable. Well, it, it gets overtaken. I mean, you think about, if we're here in Gaston County, and Gastonia seems stable, and, and it's, you know, a place we live, and people come in and totally overtake our town. The Babylonians come in and completely overtake Jerusalem to where now freedom is gone, peace is gone, and in fact, this guy, his name originally was Hananiah, he's taken into captivity. So this guy, Hananiah, his name will get changed eventually, they come in and basically imprison him and take him into captivity. So clearly, if you want to jot down there, that's a down arrow. I mean, that, that is a negative part of his life happening right there. This folds right into three years of training he goes into in this new army that he doesn't want to be a part of. They shave his head. They put clothes on him that are different. They eventually end up changing his name. They're basically brainwashing him and saying, you're not who you used to be. We're changing you and completely altering the trajectory of your life because your God has no ownership and leadership over you. Now the Babylonians do. We own you. So the second thing we see, the new name, the new identity, they give him this name, Shadrach. They give his buddies, Meshach. And Abednego, if you've heard those. And then the fourth guy you've probably heard of, Daniel. He gets his crazy name, Belteshazzar. So they're giving them new names. And I thought about this this week. said, okay, so what if that somebody came in, took you captive, and gave you a new name? Like, say, say you're a Cowboys fan. They came in and they said, from now on, we're going to call you Palomalu. And you're like, what? I'm not taking on the name of a Steeler. You're like, I'm a Cowboy fan. Or what if, you know, you're a Tar Heel, and they say, you know what, from now on, we're going to call you Blue Devil. You're like, no, man, I'm not going to take on this name that I don't believe in, that I, I despise. They come in and give you a new name and say, no, no, no longer are you that. 
This is your new name. We're totally changing your character, the way you think, the way you act, the way you look. It's all changing. So that was the second thing. The third thing, I call it royal food. They come to this table. And at first it seems interesting. They, they come to this table and say, you know, we're going to feed you in this new training. Shadrach, we're going to feed you. But here's how it was. You walk up to this table, and if, if you're like at our house, we sit down for food. I say, we thank God for it. Because there are people, not only in our world, people in our county who are going hungry. So when we sit down at our table, we say, hey, we, we want to thank God for this food. We want to thank Jesus for this food, and may we honor him with it. So what if you sit down at that table, and they say, from now on, when you sit at a table, this food they bring out, that is being honored to lift up an idol. And in fact, we're going to thank that idol for it. We're going to say, when you eat that food, it is to give you energy to carry forth the name of that idol. You're going to act like that idol, that false god, that's what that food is for. And you sit there and look at that burger a little bit differently and say, can I, in my heart, in my right mind, can I take in food like that to the glory of somebody like that? And so, in fact, Daniel and those three guys, they chose not to eat it. They said, you know what? Give us a chance to eat just vegetables, which at our house, that would not go over well if it was just vegetables. But they said, we're just going to eat vegetables. We're going to eat healthier food and see what it does to us. And in fact... They do that, and they come out better. They're healthier. So actually, they made a choice. They stood up for what they believe, and God did something good there, so they're kind of like an up arrow. You're like, okay, so there's some bad things happening, some bad things happening, intermixed with some good things happening. Well, it was interesting. As a result of this, this choice they made, the king is even saying, man, you guys are smart. Man, you guys are sharp. You guys are more brilliant than the rest of these advisors I have. And so in, the, in the Daniel, it actually says they were 10 times better than the other advisors. So they're making these choices, and God is blessing them. And they're thinking, you know what? Maybe this captivity thing, maybe God's going to bring us out of it. He's going to help us through this. Well, in fact, they remained in that service. They didn't come out of it. They stayed for days and weeks and months. And do you ever feel like sometimes, like some of those fires I talked about, you feel like you're in something that just has some type of cycle to it that you can't get out of. And there's the down arrows and down arrows and down arrows. You're saying, God, where are you? Where are you in this? Well, number four, the king is in charge, Nebuchadnezzar. Let's call him King Neb. He has this dream, and he says, okay, I am troubled by my dreams. I need somebody to figure it out for me. He comes to all his advisors and said, you guys are smart. You say you're brilliant. Tell me my dream and tell me what it meant. And, of course, these guys are like, man, nobody could do that. It's impossible to know somebody's dream and to interpret it. So Nebuchadnezzar says, okay, well, since nobody can figure it out, all the advisors, let's go kill them. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Belteshazzar, all the guys, let's kill them. So clearly, there's a down arrow going on. Guys are feeling like, God, you are with us. I think you, you were with us. What's happening here? We stood up for you. The king's going to kill us. Now, here's what's interesting. You ever been in that time where you're in that moment saying, God, where are you? And you're praying for a solution that you think is going to go this way. And God, in fact, comes back and says, no, no, no I'm going to give you a solution, but it's a different way. And God comes to these guys and says, hey, okay, Daniel, I'm going to give you the power to interpret that dream. So Daniel goes in. He interprets King Neb's dream. And King Neb's excited. He says, wow, that's amazing. God is with you. So I'm going to go ahead and promote you. It's what we call uh, promotions all around. Because God, he provided up arrow. He says, promotions all around, up arrow. Daniel gets a better job. He brings his friends along and says, my guys, I want them to also have better jobs. And they see God working. They're thinking, man, this, this could be turning around. God's with us. Maybe he'll get us out of captivity. Maybe he'll get us through these, these trials in our life. Now, the problem is, is they had heard rumors that this king was going to continue to impose his way of thinking. He was going to say, you, you think you're kind of flying under the radar with your God. You think that you're showing us you had not been brainwashed. And they're hearing rumors about something coming. And maybe that's like you. You say, you know what, I, I'm hearing rumors about, I mean, my finances are going to tank. Or what about our health? Or what about our anxiety? Something is coming that's bad. And so one day, they wake up. And Shadrach has been going down this path. And he turns this corner. And he sees this huge image of gold. And he looks beside it. And he sees the furnace.
cannot. I will not worship that. Now! With all our hearts, we follow you. We Bow your you heads! And seek your presence. With all my heart, I follow you. I fear you. I seek your presence. Bring them! Oh, my friends. Your faith will be tested now. Daniel! What's wrong with them? Why will your friends not bow to me? I assure you, sire, they will serve you faithfully. All their lives, as I will, but... But... But they will only worship God. I will make them bow. We seek your presence. With all our heart, we follow you. We seek your presence. When we wish to bend something that is hard and unyielding, what do we do with it? We put it into the fire. Majesty, take him! We fear you, and we seek your presence. Burn them! Majesty, no! Burn them! What? No! Bring oil! Come! Come! Fire! Bring me fire! <laughs> Hear my cry. The cords of death entangle me. The anguish of the grave consumes me. Do not ignore my tears. I am overcome by sorrow. I call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, save me! <laughs> Why do they not burn? People of Judah, rise! God is with us! He's with us! God is with us! How about that? Imagine being there and seeing a modern day Dale years ago who said, you know what? God's with us. Even when he gets scared, even when it seems impossible, even when it seems like there's no answer, so how'd they do it? Well, we come to the first pivotal point. Pivotal point number one. So I encourage you to put down a question mark. It says, what, what are you going to choose to stand for? What are you going to choose to believe? And really the bottom line is, who are you going to choose to believe? Who are you going to choose to stand on? 
Because the God who is back there with Shadrach is with there with you. When it looks like your marriage can't make it, when it looks like the doctor's report can't possibly be good, when it looks like your finances, there's no way it can work out, when it looks like your anxiety saying, I can't handle this anymore, and God says, will you believe in me? Will you stand on me? You will come to that pivotal point, and you'll have to choose. So when they came to that moment, and were standing that fire, and you saw what happened to them, something supernatural occurred. And God still does that. Now what's interesting, you see in that moment when they, they were standing there, you talk about being exposed when thousands of people bow down and you're the only three standing. And you think about that even symbolically. When they look at you and say, money-wise, you can't possibly make it. You say, you know what, I'm trusting God. You know, your health, there's no possible way to, to make it through this. You say, well, I'm trusting in God. Everybody else is, is symbolically bowing down to fear or worry or their own solutions. Say, no, I will stand up. You know what? They got moved toward that furnace, and what they encountered on the way was persecution and threats and intimidation. It was a major down arrow right before that pivotal moment. Major! Where people will look at you and say, how can you possibly do that think that, believe that, and God says, just walk with me. Walk with me into that furnace, and we'll go through this together. Now, think about their emotions, their fears, their worries, their doubts, their anger. Maybe they're mad saying, God, look, we stood up for you, so why am I going into the furnace? Or maybe they got to it and finally said, God, it's all over, and I'm going to be at peace with that because you've got it. I, I don't know. But those emotions, God wants to be a part of those emotions. And that's when you get to pivotal point number two. Because when you get into the book of Daniel this week, and I'm telling you, get in there. Daniel chapter 3, verse 18. Those guys, when they're right before they go in the furnace, they say this. They say, you know what? God can save us. But even if he doesn't, we will not bow down to your God. Even if he doesn't, we will not give up on him as the giver of our hope. Because sometimes in life, honestly, sometimes you file bankruptcy. Sometimes in life, the cancer gets you. Sometimes in life, the fear, it oppresses you and doesn't give up. But you say, you know what, God? You're still with me. And there is a longer-term vision I have in this. It's your vision for it. And I'm going to trust you in that. And now the world may say, you know, Matt, that's just, you know, that's just too shallow. And you, you just think you believe all that stuff and it makes you smile. Or, you know, there's, you just say, well, somebody, you know, they, they didn't get cured and they died and God failed them. So you know what? God sees things differently. He does. I'll unpack that in just a minute. But in those moments, those pivotal moments where we say, God, even if the world says you're failing us in this, I will not bow down. I will not give up. I want you to think about a story. Even if it's your first time in church, you've probably heard about a guy named Peter. This guy, Peter, generations later, was following around Jesus. He was seeing him do amazing things. And his, I tell you, his up arrows, down arrows, he had a friend named John, had his head cut off. You're thinking, oh my goodness, I'm following Jesus, I may die. The next up arrow, they saw thousands fed. They're like, wait a second, there, there is some things God's doing here. This guy, Peter, ends up in a boat. And again, this is in your takeaway card. You can look at it this week in Matthew 14. He's in a boat, and there's a storm. And they're scared for their life, thinking, God, we're going to die. Where is God in this? And they see a ghost walking to them. They're thinking, how can this get any worse? We're about to die. We're in a storm. A ghost is walking to us, and the ghost turns out to be Jesus. And Jesus steps out there, and he stands, he stands a little ways away from the boat. And Peter's like, Jesus, if that's you, tell me to come to you. And Jesus said, it's me. And so Peter, at this moment, stands at the edge of the boat. And I wonder if he thought back and said, remember that God who was with Shadrach? Remember that God who did in, in things that are unbelievable, supernatural, said, walk in the fire with me. And Peter says, you know what? This wave, these waves are crazy, but I'm going to trust him in it. And I'm going to step on out. And he does. Peter becomes the only man besides Jesus to ever walk on water up arrow. But you know what? He starts walking on it, and his faith, like mine, it gets weak. <laughs> and you know, if you read the story in Matthew 14, it says he began to sink. You know, if, if you're in water and you start to sink, it's not really a gradual thing. 
is you're either above the water or you're under the water. And when you're under the water in a storm and it's raging and you're drowning and you think you're about to die, you're not thinking, I'm kind of sinking. You're thinking, God, I'm dying. Where are you? Was that really Jesus out there? And Peter's probably jumping above the water and Jesus says, it's me, come on. And he pulls him out. They get back in the boat and they move on with life. And we see Shadrach and we see Peter and we see Dale as people that said, God, you're with me in the furnace. You're with me in the storm. You're with me in the, the health issues and the, the trials I'm going through. And God says, look, there's times you're going to sink, but I am right there with you. And so we see, number seven, that God protected him. He protected him, definitely. Big up arrow. And you look inside that fire and you say, was it an angel? Was it Jesus? People aren't sure. Different accounts, different thoughts about it. The bottom line, God sent help. Okay, we could debate the, the ins and outs and the details. God sent help. So when you need help and you call out to him, he'll be there. Even when people say there's no way God could be there, it's getting so bad, God's not there. You say he's, he's still there. He's still there. Now here's the interesting thing. You could kind of end it right there. You could, we could have cut it off when they were safe in the fire and said that is phenomenal. But don't miss... What happened after that? Did you see those other people stand up? Did you see those people, their faith lifted when they saw God working in Shadrach and his buddies and they stood up and said, God is still with us. God is still working. So I want to encourage you in this huge up arrow in your life. When God works in your story, people notice it. And it inspires them to say, God can still work in my story. Those guys were willing to trust God and give up whatever it took, and it inspired other people to walk with God as well. Now, here's the tricky thing. You could also then end the story there, but if you read on in Daniel, if you know anything at all the Bible, about the Bible, you've probably heard about Daniel and the lion's den. Because a couple chapters later, Daniel ends up in a den of lions that should have killed him. He stood up for what he believed. He got put into a den of lions, ex honestly expecting that this is it. Dead. We don't hear any more about Shadrach and his guys. I'm, I'm not sure about that. But Daniel, as one of these other guys who stood up for God, later, another major down arrow. You're like, wait a second, I thought the down arrows were done. I thought when we get through the fire, it's all up arrows. It's not all up arrows. It's just not. But you know what? When Daniel had the down arrow, and he stood for God again, and he came out of that, that lion's den, and I think more people said, oh my goodness, God, God's still with him. And he's still with us. So as we start kind of landing this plane, I want you to think about this. A couple of thoughts to focus on this week. A couple of thoughts to focus on. And these go with your takeaway card because I want you to look at a couple passages this week. Because the first thought is that in the furnace, my help comes from God. And he, thinks, he sees things differently than I do. Now think about this. When you're in the furnace, my help comes from God. Is it really, Matt? I said, yes, really. In Psalm 121, I want you to look at it this week. It's written, says, man, where does my help come from? Where does my help come from? It says, you know what? I, I lift up my eyes to the hills. My help, it comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. It comes from him. It doesn't come from, if, if you were here at the opening of service, you saw that video where it showed him standing on his job and that rug got pulled out. Standing on, you know, his ability, his health, it got pulled out. Standing on his relationships, it got pulled out. I said, no, no, it's none of those things. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So that's where we say our help comes from him, and he's got this different perspective. He doesn't look at your furnace and say, man, I'm going to try to get you out of that as quick as I can. He doesn't say, I'm so sorry that happened to you. He said, look, I see things differently. And when you look at Isaiah 55 this week, you'll see that God says, my thoughts and my ways are higher than your thoughts and your ways. And when you put those two things together and say, my help comes from him, and he sees things differently, you can walk through that furnace. Now, the second thing, the second thought for this week, how is God going to use the furnace in your life to tell his story? Because when you think about a furnace you go through, those five things I mentioned at the start about jobs and health and money, God's not just helping you through that just for you. God's helping you through that to tell his story better. And when we choose to do that, God works in our life just like he did with Shadrach, where other people will stand up and say, wow, I can follow that God too. I can be inspired to take another step. 
I can make it through my fire or my storm because you did. So again, the bottom line for the series, God's telling this timeless story. He was telling it back in the furnace, at the ocean, on that lake, and in Dale's life. He's telling a timeless story, and we each have a unique and personal part to play in it. Now here at Vision, we want to help you in your furnace. In fact, we've designed a team, and like John was saying, environments to help you. So I'll do something different as I finish up. I'm going to invite our care team to come stand up here for a minute. Our care team is designed to help you, to serve you. And the reality is, these are people just like me and you. They've got jobs and families and stresses and life and journeys and struggles. But, and if you guys at all maybe stand, how about on that end? And I'll, I'm going to introduce you guys. And this care team is designed that every Sunday, at least two of them are over here in our care room. When a service ends and lights come up over here, our care room is here for you to go and meet one lady and one guy who stands over here to talk to or to pray with or to ask a question to or to get a Bible from or honestly just to, just to get a hug or just to make a friendship. And this team, hey, these people care about you. They care about you. And you know what? They're not done going through the furnace. <laughs> I mean, I talked to some of them this week about some of the things they're going through, and we're walking through it together. But you know what? God has given them a unique gifting to be available for you. Whether it's in the care room or walking around after church or uh, during the week, and we're, we're starting this next Sunday. In the back of the chairs, we'll have what we call a connection card. You can write down your prayer needs. These guys will pray for you. These guys will call you if you want to be called. And let's see. what We'll have, uh, we'll pull up some of the names up on the screen and uh, if you would just kind of wave and see this is Wayne Gamble, he heads up the team and Julie Hill right here and Tracy Pearson down there and Cindy Garrison right there and Mark Osterling right there and Keith Mills we missed a slide for Julia I'm sorry, and Julie Cook <laughs> hey, we're human. Do you know what? These guys are real. These men and women care about you. These men and women, they're just walking this journey, and I love it because they've said, you know what? <laughs> Man, what if I don't know all the answers? That's okay. And what if I don't have all the solutions? They just, just be there and use your life experience and your training and your spiritual preparation to minister to people in our church, in our community. So in a minute, when I pray, they're going to scatter, and a couple are going to go there, and a couple will just kind of go back into the crowd, but we'll have a song when we finish. And you know, Some Sundays we have a song at the end, and you can come during that song and go pray. In some weeks, we just finish up, and when we're done at the end, you can walk over there and meet them. But we want to be here to help you in your furnace. Because it's going to come. Those up arrows, down arrows, they're going to keep coming. But those question marks, those pivotal moments where you decide what you're going to do, who you're going to believe in, who you're going to stand on, that's when God truly will write his story. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you were with Shadrach, you were with Peter, you were with Dale. God, you promised to be with each of us if we call out to you.